guys, welcome back to the I'm Left podcast. My name is Jennifer and I'm here today with another member of the I'm Left team. You guys have probably already read some of his articles and he also happens to be my wonderful boyfriend, Marcel. Hi everyone. I'm so happy to be here with my gorgeous, amazing girlfriend. And today we're going to talk about taking responsibility. Yes. Marcel and I are going to be taking over the podcast from now on. So you guys will be um, getting more podcasts from us in the future. We know it's been a while since we have uploaded any podcasts, but we're back and we're ready to put up more content for you guys. And so yes, today we'll be discussing taking responsibility, persistence, faith, victimization, remembering who we really are and, you know, things related to that topic. Taking responsibility is actually one of my favorite topics to discuss because I think it's a very important part of manifestation that is often overlooked by people or it's usually only tackled in a very surface level. Yes, taking responsibility is one of the most important parts of conscious creations because if you want your life to change, you have to take responsibility for it. If we are repeating the same old story over and over again and nagging about it, then nothing will change. So guys, you are already in Barbados. Thanks for listening. Uh, (laughs) Bye. No, just kidding. But what is taking responsibility? I think a lot of people know what taking responsibility means on a surface level, like I said earlier, but not as an overall lifestyle. For me personally, taking responsibility means remembering that we are not a victim to our circumstances and that nothing is ever permanent or set in stone that everything is malleable and changeable. And taking full responsibility means remembering that you have full control, that you are the operant power. Making the decision to change what is going on within and not just reading the teachings. It is a choice, a decision. So start doing it right now, not tomorrow or in five minutes. A lot of people aren't taking responsibility. They are faking responsibility. Yeah, and this is what it means to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. And Neville actually has a very good quote on this, but he does refer to a Bible passage which goes like, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass and goeth his way and straight away forgetting what manner of man he is. So essentially... Novel translates this by saying, the word in this quotation means idea, concept, or desire. You deceive yourself by hearing only when you expect your desires to be fulfilled through mere wishful thinking. Your desire is what you want to be and looking at yourself in a glass is seeing yourself in imagination as that person. Forgetting what manner of man you are is failing to persist in your assumption. The perfect law of liberty is the law which makes possible liberation with limitation. That is the law of assumption. To continue in the perfect law of liberty is to persist in the assumption that your desire is already fulfilled. You are not a quote unquote forgetful here, when you keep the feeling of your wish fulfilled constantly alive in your consciousness. This makes you a doer of the work and you are blessed in your deed by the inevitable realization of your desire. You must be doers of the law of assumption for without application, the most profound understanding will not produce any desired result. Frequent reiteration and repetition of important basic truths run through these passages. So basically what Neville is saying, it's kind of like when, you know, if someone is looking in the mirror, let's just say, you know, you wake up, you're looking in the mirror and you go about your day and you just forget how your face looks. He's saying it's kind of like that. You read the teachings, watch videos, listen to podcasts, articles, whatever the case may be. But throughout the day, you're kind of just forgetting that this is the way of life. So I completely agree when Marcel said faking responsibility and it's kind of like when people say things such as I'm living in the end but he said x y and z or but this happened to me or I'm doing everything correctly but nothing is working out or the circumstance is an issue now this doesn't mean that we ignore our our circumstances or the things that are bothering us in the sense that we're in that we are pretending like things aren't bothering us but it's more so that we're remembering that there are no second causes and that everything is part of the process and that nothing is actually opposing us and so I believe that this is a huge part 
part of taking responsibility is remembering that you do have to actually implement and apply it every day as a lifestyle and not just read it and just do it for like a, like maybe one week or two weeks and say, well, it's not working. Something that really helped me in my journey is seeing conscious manifestation, kind of like any other skill. For example, you know, you play the piano and you have to practice every single day with it, right? You have to persist. Same thing with if you're lang- learning a language or if you're, you know, studying a subject in school. I kind of tackled it in that way. It was like, okay, well, if I want to get better at it, then I have to practice and persist every single day and not just assume that it's not working. People also say, for example, I'm a millionaire, I'm living in the end, but still pending on Facebook about how we can afford certain things, etc. Or I'm living in the end, I've done all the manifest my SP, but still waiting for a text to confirm this. This is not living in the end. I was actually thinking about the piano part. Like I yeah. wrote an article about Mozart, for example, that he he was a prodigy. Mm-hmm. Like sure he did play a lot on the but he was from a very young age already, like super talent. We call talent, you know, I don't believe in talent. Obviously, he was he was living in the end and he always believed in that. Yeah, I agree that there's no such thing as quote unquote talent. I don't believe that only certain people are born with it, for example. I believe that is something that we cultivate, that we accept as true for ourselves. It's just a self-concept really, basically. You know, everything is available within us and accessible to us, not just certain people only, you know, not just yeah, you know, part. I totally agree. It's often very subtle, like I stated earlier, And this is why it's important to be mindful of the inner conversations we're having throughout the day. Like I said, you don't want to just do it for one or two weeks or just visualize or meditate or do a technique. And then throughout the day, the rest of the time, you're still staying in the same mindset. This is contradicting and serving two masters, as Neville says. And your dominant state will always prevail. Your dominant state, which you predominantly focus on, is going to win no matter how many techniques it is that we do, no matter how many visualizations and meditations. I mean, they're beautiful. They're wonderful. They keep us focused. I very much advocate for them. But you do have to be mindful and aware throughout the day of the inner dialogues that are going through throughout your mind. And taking responsibility also applies to everyone as you push out meaning family friends and sp as well because they are no exception to the law yeah exactly i actually think everyone as you pushed out is probably the biggest one of the biggest topics that people have a hard time taking responsibility because we're so used to seeing everyone as separate from us And we're kind of unaware how they are mirroring us. I think when it comes to everyone as you pushed out, one of the important parts of taking responsibility is acknowledging how the other person is mirroring you. For example, if you're having an argument with someone, instead of blaming the other person for what it is that you're feeling and experiencing, ask yourself, why am I being triggered by this? thing that they're saying why is it that I'm reacting in this certain way because that's taking responsibility you're acknowledging that you are the one that's perceiving it in a certain way because of your triggers in that moment because of your reaction in that moment and you're not blaming the other person it's harder to apply everyone as you pushed out when you're only seeing it as the other person is making you feel a certain way rather than you reminding yourself in that moment that you're the one that's being triggered by this specific perception Yeah, we reflect each other as well in in many different ways. Yeah, in romantic relationships, in my opinion, romantic relationships is actually the biggest mirror. Like everyone is mirroring you, everyone is you pushed out, but I feel like when you're very... When you're very vulnerable with someone and open with them, they're the biggest mirror. They really show you what you have alive within you. And it's it's difficult because, yeah, you love this person so much. You want to spend, you know, your entire life with them or whatever the case may be. And so it is difficult to take responsibility, which is why it is that I say that manifesting a specific person is something that you're meant to experience because it does show you those things that you have alive within you. I had been consciously thinking about you know, I wonder what my beautiful Jennifer looks like if she dyes her hair. And then she told me she's going to dye her hair. Mm-hmm. So and yeah. all, all those little things reflect as well. I agree. But it's also it's not always very direct. It's sometimes very indirect. The more you're aware of who it is that you are as a person. I mean, we're lucky that we both know about the law. And so we're both very aware. We're able to pick up on those things. But of course, that's not a priority in a relationship. You know, as long as you are aware, because this is your reality, this is your own subject of experience and everyone is you pushed out as long as you're aware and you're taking responsibility and you're making those connections then yeah you'll be able to see more and more on this journey how this relationship is actually benefiting you and your spiritual experience
Yes. This is why being aware of who you really are is so important and why our website advocates for it so much because when you know who you really are and what consciousness is, you also remember that everyone is simply wearing an ego mask. You know, God is able to see beyond the illusion of the states people are in to see who they really are. They're also a part of your divine love. When someone is reflecting back to me a state that I don't like, for example, I go within and I remember that the other person is simply only mirroring me and is not responsible for making me feel better. And I think this is another thing in relationships especially, not just relationships, but friendships, really anything, because a specific person is anyone, right? And a relationship can be anything. But I think we kind of depend on the other person to make us feel better. And that's, you know, very subtly not taking responsibility for our own emotions and for us being the operant power. If we don't allow ourselves to feel a certain way and accept certain feelings, give ourselves that validation and take responsibility for it rather than depending on the other person to give it to us, we're not acknowledging our true power. We're not acknowledging our true self. And so it is up to us to realize that in the moment in every moment, really, our entire lives, we have to realize and remember that. Respond rather than react. Another misconception, I don't know if it's the novel community or the manifesting community, is that we are allowing people to walk all over us or treating us like a doormat when we don't react to someone or when we're remembering that um, they are marrying us. But really, everyone as you pushed out doesn't mean that you're allowing people to walk all over you. And by the way, we will we are doing another separate podcast cast on this. I know that a lot of you guys have been asking for it. So we are going to be doing that and going more in detail about it. As a matter of fact, you don't need to be in the same space as someone in order to shift your assumption about them. You don't need to be in an unlovely circumstance in order to change your assumption about someone. You know, you do need to take care of your own well-being. And I'm a very strong advocate for first taking care of your own well-being when it is that you're manifesting a change in another person or a change in any situation. If you're not feeling like you can actually persist or live in the end or shift your assumptions because of a circumstance you're in it it is going to be a little bit difficult I know that's also an assumption as well but I personally am a very strong advocate for allowing yourself that space first to take care of yourself because remember it's never about the other person it is always about yourself as Neville says it's no one to change but self another huge misconception is thinking that everyone is you pushed out means that you are allowing people to treat you badly which can also cause some people to hold on to guilt, shame, or blame. You don't need to be in the same space as someone to shift your assumption. I've manifested specific people in the past back in my life that I haven't spoken to in years. I remember this one friend, I hadn't spoken to her in like literally years. And she, I think I actually wrote this in one of my articles. I don't remember which one it was, but um, I hadn't spoken to her in years. She hadn't been on face and on Instagram in years. I had lost her number, everything. And I just intended that she would reach out to me. And literally, I think it was a couple of days later, she messaged me and she was like, you know, Jen, I reactivated back my Instagram just for you. So literally, that is how powerful we are. We don't need to actually be speaking to someone or be in the same space as them in order to shift things because it is an inside job. It's all the inner work. Manifesting takes place within. Yes, exactly. I remember I was watching soccer and I was really, really curious about where it is soccer player or was that I haven't heard a very long time. And then like, I'm not sure if it was the day after of the same day and they actually mentioned him, his name and where he was playing right now. Stuff like that, you know, it happens very fast a lot of times. And also sometimes you manifest tags or people you haven't seen for such a long time. And then you think about them and the next day you see them at the supermarket or just walking outside and there's nothing to ever there's no guilt or blame or shame to ever hold on to because we're only ever doing the best we can at any given moment with the information that we know and i strongly believe that every part of this spiritual experience of this human experience is working for a higher and greater purpose and that nothing is actually in vain that we're never actually doing anything wrong i strongly believe that and i think that's why i'm able to manifest things so quickly is because i just genuinely don't care because i know that in the the long run it really doesn't mean anything there is no external universe judging you there's no external god judging you you know 
we're making the rules, we're the operant power. And so the only reason that we hold on to guilt or blame or shame is because we think that there is something judging us or something keeping tabs on us. For me, mainly focusing on the things that you know, that you love and things like that. Mainly gratitude really helps comes to blaming things and actually looking at the beautiful things you created and everything around you and focus on that and shine your light on that and that really helps putting uh, off the blame and really making the decision to stop blaming yourself you need to be aware of what's going on within and really stop blaming yourself really take that responsibility think for yourself every day that you're gonna stop blaming yourself a few of you guys have asked us our thoughts on forgiveness For example, forgiving yourself for creating an unlovely version of someone. To me, when you when we're asking this question, we're implying that we did something wrong. Again, that we're bl- we're blaming ourselves for it. When I have a desire, I immediately respond with two reminders. One, that this desire is a done deal and therefore a real reality. And two, that this desire benefits me and everyone involved. That there is nothing to forgive because everything that you and others in your reality have experienced benefit you both and are a part of this spiritual journey. So for me personally, when I think of the old versions of people that I, the unlovely versions of people that I manifested in my past, I don't blame myself for it because I can now see how it actually benefited both of us at that time. And all I do is remind myself that now I get to shift my perception of them I get to shift the story and holding on to blame and guilt and thinking that you or the other person needs to be forgiven comes from unconsciously holding ourselves and the other person in a victim state because as Neville has stated when we hold people in states and we do not shift our perception of them we are quote-unquote robbing them of the good that they are which is why I mentioned earlier that is important that it is important to remember that everyone is only wearing an ego mask yeah and so we're gonna touch base later on in the podcast more on the topic of forgiveness but I kind of want to move to the topic of manifesting a specific person because as I said earlier not only is everyone as you pushed out one of the biggest topics for taking responsibility but specifically manifesting romantic relationships for example I see people saying things such as their circumstances are the exception to the law the only reason a circumstance seems more difficult to shift is because we're still seeing it as an opposition to our desires and we're still thinking that this circumstance has nothing to do with the spiritual journey when it actually has everything to do with it it's all part of the manifestation process like I said earlier When you remember that you're the operant power, you also remember that your circumstances aren't different or more difficult to shift. Of course, I know that there are some circumstances that are more pressing than others. And like I stated, of course, we should be taking care of our own well-being first and foremost. But still, it isn't different to shift than any other circumstance is. It is exactly the same exact steps. And some people are also not taking responsibility for their own feelings within themselves and they are only focused on manifesting their specific person you know i rather call as peace our own superpower but that's just me <laughs> uh, all they want to hear is what steps to take and how to live in the end but they are not taking the responsibility for being the creator seeing someone that needs to fix themselves for example i can only be happy if i manifest that specific person but you have to think with sp i always say think about your own superpowers that's what matter and it's all inside of yourself i actually really like that <laughs> yeah and, and again we're not saying that it's not okay to be happy when manifesting a specific person but when you are actually taking full responsibility for being the creator and you really are taking responsibility for being the operant power living in the end comes naturally living in the end making those assumptions shifting your state comes naturally it follows that overall being of who you know it is that you truly are so remember that you're already whole and complete and that we do not need to victimize ourselves we don't need to put ourselves down when we're feeling off or if we have reacted for a moment which brings us to the topic of victimization someone asked a question in our facebook group if trying too hard at manifesting is another way to perpetuate the victim mentality she also mentioned that 
She has been taught that being a victim is addictive. In my opinion, when we use non-beneficial phrases to describe ourselves, it is also a form of keeping us in a victim state, in a victim mentality. It is okay to acknowledge what you're struggling with, and it is also preferred because, of course, we don't want to suppress our emotions and feelings because manifesting is not about being in good vibes or being positive 24-7. It isn't about rejecting the human experience, and I believe it is this misconception that causes people to try to hard account manifestation in the first place. So long you think there is something that is wrong with you as soon as you feel off or see a certain circumstance, or if you think yourself or someone else or an experience is opposing you, is how much stronger your hold on separation will be. And it is also how much longer you will keep yourself in a victim mindset. Exactly. And when you're having an inner dialogue of things such as, as why does this always happen to me or why can't I stop these thoughts, etc. You are unconsciously victimizing yourself because you're forgetting that you are in control of what things mean. Such as thoughts popping up and the situation that you think is happening against you. Don't take responsibility for just one day. You know, keep persisting in the new story every day. Yeah, being a victim comes from seeing ourselves as a victim. And I agree, like I said earlier, you can't just persist for one day or one week and then say things aren't working. This is a this is a lifestyle change. It's not a technique or a tool or a quick fix. If you apply Neville teachings as a quick fix, well, you're going to get quick fix results. It's a way of life, you know, stay consistent and build this up step by step. Because remember... Every little baby step will eventually become a huge jump. Of course, it's okay to skip days and or have off days. We all do sometimes. This does not ruin anything at all. It is all about remembering who we really are. If we really want to change, then we will do everything to make that change. Every second is the right moment to start. One way that I don't victimize myself is that I do everything for myself. Like, for example, I manifest for me to show myself those results. In the beginning of my journey especially, yeah, of course, I began by doing it for other things and for other people. But then I realized that it was actually for me so that I no longer have to feel like a victim to my circumstances. So that I no longer have to feel like I'm small compared to this world or like I have no control. So I started to persist and practice and persist and keep on persisting for me for my own self taking responsibility is making a promise to yourself I promise that you will show up for yourself and that you will persist for you like I said in the beginning of my journey I first started off persisting to prove something to myself as a means to an end and I also see a lot of people are doing this unconsciously but then I realized that if I'm the god of my reality then I don't need to prove anything to myself I persist because of who I am I persist for me to experience all that I'm capable of Your desires are valid not because of what you do or do not do or feel or experience, but because of who it is that you really are. In order to lift yourself out of this victim mentality, you have to first stop stop seeing yourself as one, like I said. Of course, I know that there are certain circumstances that are more pressing than others. And I don't believe that asking for help or doing what you need to do to take care of yourself is being a victim. I think thinking that something isn't quote-unquote godlike is denying yourself, is denying that human part of being God. You are God in all roles and in all states, and we act according to our state of being. Feeling like a victim comes from falling for the illusion that things can't get better or that you're doing something wrong. I agree. You know, make this decision for yourself. And not just to manifest your stuff. Make it because you want to live happier, more free, and just more loving towards yourself. Do it for yourself because you are worth it. Do not seek for outer validation. All answers lie within ourselves. So the victim mentality comes from what we've experienced as a child in our childhood and not receiving those basic needs in certain areas of our life you know depending upon what it is that we did experience and so we are not a victim because in my opinion labeling ourselves as victim implies that we are broken because of these past experiences and thinking that something is wrong with us and as you know now we are far from that our experiences and our circumstances do not define us we should be seeing ourselves as someone who is powerful who is capable we should be seeing ourselves as someone who can overcome these who can you know release these patterns and let go of them and to me that that is what taking responsibility is it's honoring ourselves 
honoring our feelings, allowing ourselves to grieve, allowing ourselves to do what we need to do, all with that assumption in the back of our mind that we are going to get through this and that we can overcome it and that we will keep getting better and better at this every single day. I love that. Mm -hmm. And a victim mentality is also a lot of times used as a defensive mechanism. Feel safe and comfortable. It's sometimes really hard to stand up and take responsibility because it makes you feel vulnerable. It makes you have to face your own reflection. It's a step out of your comfort zone. For example, in politics, having the responsibility and being in control often comes with criticism, but staying on the other side doesn't. In Dutch, we have this saying called, the best helmsmen are assured. This is a literally uh, saying. It's not true in English. And basically means that the people who know the best are assured instead of on the ship. And let's say you're in a relationship and you're in a victim mentality, it feels less vulnerable. Saying sorry, for example, is hard because it's hard to take responsibility. And we totally understand that. It makes us feel like we are giving the other person power, but that's definitely not true. Knowing now, though, that our power is inside of ourselves, we can make that step and actually take responsibility. And I absolutely love that. I completely agree that we sometimes stay in that victim mindset as like a protective mechanism. I completely agree with that. So this brings us back to the topic of forgiveness. We have received many questions regarding this. Someone asked us how to properly forgive and let go. I do forgiveness work, genuinely feel the forgiveness, and later on find myself ruminating on something or feeling guilty about circumstances I created. Is forgiveness something that we also need to persist in and continually do over again? Let's first start off by reading a quote from Neville in regards to forgiveness. You must learn to distinguish between the eternal human who occupies a state and the state itself. This is the only means to forgiveness. All scripts are written for actors. In the play, the actor cast in the role of a murderer must play that part, and so it is with and so and so it is with this world. God the author wrote the script and plays all of the parts while wearing a mask called quote unquote another. If you will learn to distinguish between states of consciousness and their occupant, you can forgive everyone. How? By identifying the one you would forgive with the ideal he failed to realize. The highest ideal would be to identify him with the divine image itself. As God, we said, let us make man in our image. That image is Christ. You are called upon to take a man who is condemned by the world and see him radiating and reflecting God's glory. Well, you could fall a little short of that image, but you could take an idea he has failed to realize. It could be affluence or at least an income equal to his responsibilities until you are strong enough to go beyond the barrier of observation and see him as a divine image himself. So this quote by Neville to me is basically saying that forgiveness is a shift in our perception and that's really all that forgiveness is in my opinion it doesn't necessarily have to be something that is tackled in a very long drawn out difficult way of course i know that certain things do take more time depending upon your own experience but really forgiveness is simply a shift in our perception of that person of ourselves of the situation of our entire lives in general of the circumstance that we see i remember neville saying that how revision is actually a form of forgiveness and really all that revision is is seeing something differently and experiencing it differently within yourself the reason why it seems bigger to tackle or bigger to shift is because we carry those feelings of guilt and shame resentment hurt blame etc around us the truth is that there is actually really nothing to forgive but the idea of forgiveness helps us transcend fear into love. And so I do think it's okay to use that term forgive, like I forgive this person. I do think that is perfectly fine. There's also this quote in the Bible that I absolutely love and it goes, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And essentially what this quote means is that we should forgive other people because they're only in the states that we place them in. They are not separate from us. They don't have their own free will separate from us. They are simply mirroring our own inner perception, our own inner state and our stories at the time. When we hold on to old stories of people in the past, we are forgetting that they are us pushed out. 
Um, this actually happens a lot in relationships. For example, if you and the other person had an argument, you will bring up old stuff that they have said or done within your mind or even with them personally because we're still seeing them as the person who has did that thing rather than realizing that they were just in a state in the moment and, and that's not actually who it is that they really are. Now we're going to move on to the topic of staying persistent. We see a lot of people are struggling with this and they are not seeing results. Well, every little change wherein you feel different is a change and therefore a result. It's about those changes inside since a different state will reflect a different reality. Acknowledging those changes helps staying consistent. As I said before, every step is a step. It is something we should be aware of every day. Work on your own individual schedule, what works for you, whether it is meditation, scripting, visualizing, or whatever it may be. Yeah, I really love it when you said that every little change where, wherein you feel different is a change and therefore a result. I strongly, strongly believe in that progress is actually within and not on the outside. Um, Yes, of course, we want to see those results on the outside. And trust me, you are going to see those results. It is the law. It has to happen. It's the law you have to see results but progress is how it is that you're feeling and how it is that and what your focus is within always define where you are in the journey not based on what you see on the outside but what you're focusing on within and what you're feeling within and know that how that's enough for you to be doing it correctly you know you're validating your own self you're taking responsibility in the moment you're not depending upon whether it is you're doing it correctly or not on circumstances and you should never be doing that so i completely agree you know that persisting is the most important part of manifestation however it is often misunderstood what persistence actually means sometimes people will ask me what is the difference between persistence and letting go? And the reason people are asking this is because they're assuming that letting go and persisting is doing something. However, both of these terms refer to how you are being and not what you're doing. When we stand strong in who we are and remember that true being that we are, we are also simultaneously remembering that there is nothing to actually do. Yes, of course, we have to do the inner work by shifting and focusing. There is nothing to effort at or force. We become one with everything and everyone in our circumstances. God rests in the knowing that nothing needs to be done to shift things. This is what true persistence is and is also what it means to let go. To be honest, in my opinion, there's nothing to control rather than our inner world. The outer world everything is god this lamp this computer this mic this ipad everything your chair your bed the people that you see every single thing is god consciousness and so if every single thing is god consciousness everything will work itself out for you in your favor without us having to do something so we're not persisting in doing things we're persisting in acknowledging and remembering that we are this powerful infinite being and that everything is actually being taken care of for us in our favor that it can't actually go any other way yeah Yes, and I often also see that people are persisting in the wrong things. For example, they are persisting if it comes to their SP. Um, they are visualizing themselves with their SP, which is totally fine. But remember to also imagine yourself how you would be as a person with your SP. And not just because your SP is going to fix your is issues and that's the only way for you to find love. Imagine it as loving each other from the power of your own, from your true self from who you really are. A TFA method really helps with remembering who you truly are. This stands for thoughts, feelings, and actions. So how would you think, feel, and act when your desire is already yours? Imagine from this space. This is imagining from a space of fulfillment instead of needing it to complete you. I love that. I absolutely love that. Of course, you are 1000% allowed to visualize beautiful dates and stuff like that. And, you know, I've done that. This is normal for you. This is it kind of just happens natural and spontaneous that you're gonna visualize you know beautiful experiences with your person but don't do it from a place of I need to visualize this thing in order to get x y and z and then if I don't I'm not persisting I'm not staying consistent things are being ruined or I'm messing it up taking responsibility is again like I said earlier seeing yourself as a trusting individual that can actually do this without doing stuff from a place of feeling unfulfilled when you visualize yourself as a powerful confident person not just visualize anything really honestly you know talking to yourself as that person seeing yourself as that person as that confident secure powerful being knowing that how 
why wouldn't my specific person want me, you know, because this is who it is that I am. I find that it's much more easier to accept our assumptions and accept those beautiful visualizations and affirmations that we've been telling ourselves because we're already ahead of the game. We're already seeing ourselves as people that can actually do it. Of course, this does take daily practice, daily persistence. It doesn't just happen overnight. It is a lifestyle change. But the most important thing, in my opinion, the most important thing of everything is remembering that you're already that confident, secure person, that it's not something that you have to achieve or get from the outside or that you just hope that you suddenly one day become confident. I used to do that in the beginning of my journey. I would always say, well, Jan, you're insecure and it's going to take you a very long time to feel confident and this is just who it is that you are, completely forgetting that, wait a minute, if this is my true natural state to be confident and secure, then that must mean I already have it alive within me. And this is what persistence is. You're persisting and reminding yourself of these things and you're staying consistent in that. And everything in your reality and not just your specific person is going to reflect all at once to match this inner state, to match this this recognition. Like Neville himself said, we're not forcing ourselves to believe that we're God. We're simply recognizing what already exists within us. And I see myself as a confident and powerful manifester who is able to achieve anything. And from this space, I don't force anything. I don't put myself down if I have an off moment or thinking that I delayed or canceled the manifestation because none of that is actually true. Take responsibility within yourself right now. Make this decision. Observe your thoughts, your feelings, your self-talk. If it does not resonate with you, change it. Create the self-talk that makes you feel good, that fits with you. Create a new story and keep persisting into it. Persist, persist, and persist. Did I say to persist yet? Don't say that it does not work. Say that it does because it always does. Be the doer and not the hearer. Change your life right now by taking responsibility. We are Marcel and Jennifer, and thank you all for listening to our podcast about taking responsibility, and we love you all.